Today, we become legends. Bring back tier 2 bridge items. Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, then be sure to subscribe for all my content coming soon. Today, I'm going to talk about something that is slowly being phased out of Smite that I think should be brought back, that being tier 2 bridge items. I'm sure if you played Smite for more than a week, you know that items typically come in three tiers. Tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3, getting more powerful with each upgrade. However, if you're very new to Smite and have joined us in the last year or so, you might not know that we used to have quite a few items that stopped at tier 2. These are what I refer to as tier 2 bridge items, and they were always more powerful than your normal tier 2 of an item, but they had no upgrade path to a tier 3 version. And so they would become weaker as the game progressed and would usually be sole late game for a full tier 3 item. These types of items offered a really interesting trade-off and gameplay style in my opinion. They were incredibly strong power spikes when you initially bought them and more powerful than any other item you could afford for the cost, but they tapered off and ended up wasting gold by the late game as you would typically sell them off. In essence, you would pay 1700 gold for something that's worth around 2000 gold, but would eventually sell it back for 1100 gold to buy something else, wasting 600 gold in the process. That's the price you pay for the immense early game power spikes these bridge items could offer you. As I said, we used to have many of these types of items, the most infamous ones probably being the shields, the gladiator shield and berserker shield which were reworked into the full tier 3 versions that we have now. Both these shields cost 1700 gold but maxed out at tier 2, there was no tier 3 upgrade path for them. Gladiator shield provided healing and mana restoration on ability hits and was notoriously broken on King Arthur among a few other characters. While Berserker Shield was similar, but provided the healing and mana restoration on basic attack hits instead, very similar to the Death's Toll starter item. In fact, Zerk Shield was modelled after it when the original starter items were removed at the start of Season 5. Ichevol is another one that has a Tier 3 upgrade now, but used to be a Tier 2 bridge item. It used to cost 1700 gold and build directly from Shortbow as an early game rush to dominate lane as an ADC. The concept of the item was the same, it was just slightly cheaper with less stats and no upgrade path. Dynasty Plate Helm was another that maxed out a tier 2, this one now builds into Tyrannical Plate Helm, a really cool item don't get me wrong, but it used to be a bridge item for mages or some guardians that wanted a bruiser item to deal with early physical damage but still have some power since it gave plenty of physical defense along with that damage for the early game. Arcee used to fill the same purpose a long time ago, in fact Arcee is one of the few items that went from being a full tier 3 to a tier 2 bridge item and then back to a full tier 3 again. Way back in the day, Arcee would build from an item called Draining Blade, which itself built from Light Blade. It now builds from Balance Blade, the same thing as Executioner and Kin Size in the same tree. However, in between all of this, Asi was a tier 2 bridge item built directly from Light Blade. With a cheap cost somewhere around 17 or 1800 gold, I forget the exact price, it served the same purpose as it does now, but once again had lesser stats and a much cheaper cost with no possible upgrade path. And that's just a few of the bridge items that have existed in Smite's past. My hope is that we can have this type of item brought back in the future. I think they offered really interesting gameplay and choice that made builds more impactful in your average game. If, as an ADC, you went a standard stacking build with Devos for example, but the enemy ADC went Ikevil, they would have a significant advantage over you in the early game laning phase and you'd have to play careful, but as the game progressed, their build will become weaker than yours because you have full tier 3 items, perhaps even a fully stacked Devos, and they are stuck with this tier 2 item that they're probably selling at some point. It was a nice risk reward style concept that could pay off huge, but if it didn't, then you crippled your build options later on. As far as I know, the only remaining bridge item we have left in the game is Stone of Binding, so if you're looking for an idea of what these items were like, then take a look at that item that's in Smite currently. I really hope we can see more of them in the future, though I'm not sure how realistic that is given high res have been removing these types of items consistently over the last few years. In honour of these items, and to keep the dream alive that they may return someday, I have a few concepts of my own for various roles that I'd like to share with you. Keep in mind, I'm not a game designer and these items won't be my best work, nor will they be well balanced, they're just ideas mainly. So this first one is a solo lane bridge item in the memory of the old shields. Let's call it Draining Shield for now. 1700 gold, builds from round shield, 150 health, 15 of each protections, 10% cooldown reduction, and a passive that stores a charge every time you last hit a minion or jungle monster. At 12 charges, the item will explode, dealing 200 damage in an AoE around you, which life steals for 40% of the damage done. This will be of course subject to the standard AoE life steal coefficient, which would cut the healing by two thirds if it is in an AoE, so this wouldn't be so ridiculous. This could keep the spirit of the old tier 2 shields being laning items that could provide strong sustain and an advantage in the laning phase but with no upgrade path. But this item would truly fall off in the late game. The main issue with the old tier 2 shields, especially gladiator shield, was that they didn't really fall off in the late game. 
And so the whole concept of a tier 2 bridge item that you sell later was sort of broken by them. This one wouldn't have that issue, I don't think. This next one is aimed at supports, since they rarely get any love and a bridge item is a great fit for them since they typically get less gold early on and can't afford those full tier 3 items as fast as the other roles. This one, call it Oblivion Wing, not sure what this could build off of, but perhaps Glowing Emerald if I redesigned the name a little bit. <laughs> Oblivion Wing doesn't really fit on the Glowing Emerald tree. But this item would cost 1900 gold, provide 150 health, 10 penetration, 15 of each protections, and a passive that after casting 4 abilities, your 5th one would root enemies on hit for 1 second. If the ability misses or cannot hit enemies in the first place, then the charges won't be consumed until your next ability does hit. This one is a bit out there and perhaps belongs more on a tier 3 item than a tier 2, but it's aimed more at those aggressive support picks, hence the penetration I decided to put on it. As I said at the start, these items are likely not balanced at all, and I'm sure some gods will probably break this item if they use it with the correct ability, but I still think it's a neat idea. And finally, we have Maligned Crossbow. Building from Shortbow and costing only 1600 gold, this item would come with 20 power, 10 penetration and 5% movement speed. The passive, and hear me out on this, would decrease your attack speed by 5%, but increase your basic attack damage by 8% on basic attack hits, stacking up to 5 times. So this item basically turns any hunter, or other class for that matter, as basic attacks into Heimdallia's final hit. You sacrifice attack speed the more you hit enemies, but gain a massive damage boost which makes each basic attack hit way harder, despite doing less basic attacks overall. Come to think of it, this item would probably be most viable on air cancelling assassins like Thor or Susano since they don't care much about attack speed, but having a permanent Hydra's Lament effect would be really good for them. And once again, this item is probably not balanced and the numbers on it are more so just placeholders to showcase the general idea of the item. I'm by no means saying this item should be added to the game in its current state, keep your panties on. And once again, to be honest, I think I went a bit crazy with the design of this item and it would probably work better as a full tier 3 that you keep into the late game, but these are just general item concepts and some ideas that I had. But anyway, that's my thoughts on why I like tier 2 bridge items and I think they should return to Smite in some form, plus a few of my own ideas that I think could be interesting to see in game. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, both about the general idea of the video as well as my specific item concepts. I'm very interested to see what the community thinks about this idea, as it's one that I think really should stay in the game, despite high res seeming to think otherwise. Likely due to balance concerns more than anything. I think they got spooked by how hated Glad Shield was and blamed it on it being a tier 2 item and not just Glad Shield in general being a broken item. But anyway, that's all I've got. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.